Hello everybody, welcome. Uh, I hope you are having a great Saturday and a great beginning of your weekend. And uh, so there's already quite a few of you. Please do say hello in the chat. And um, so yeah, I hope you're all doing great. Am I in focus? I think everything should be good. Let me see if you can hear the guitar. I'm sure you will. And uh, so welcome if you're new. Let me go over this really quickly. Every Saturday at 6.30, p.m. Central European time. Uh, that's 12.30 uh, if you're in New York, 9.30 if you're in LA, and uh, late at night if you're in Asia, but you should be up for this because I will teach you every Saturday a few things that I know about guitar, about uh, technique, about playing, about maybe live performance, even some music technology and recording techniques. You know, we go all over the place. And um, you never know what's coming up until the day before when I usually post the... Um, I program the live stream and uh, I'm always, of course, open to questions. And uh, I will make videos depending on what you request sometimes. But anyway, if you're new, please uh, check, this, check out this cool little animation. Subscribe to the channel because it really helps a lot reach more people. And, uh, you know, there's always... Every time there's a bit more of us and uh, I think it's fun and I think it's a, a bit of a service to those who cannot afford uh, music education or even those who can and just want to expand a little more. And my philosophy here is that I try to teach pretty much everything that I know. Uh, just a bit of housekeeping. Um, thank you for your donations. Again, I don't do pay Patreon. I know you've, you have asked before, but I just set up a little uh, PayPal thing where if you enjoy these lessons and sometimes you get something out of it and you want to contribute, it's very much appreciated. All of it goes back into the streams. So better camera, better equipment, better you know stuff. And so if you want, there's a link down there. And thank you very much for those of you who did. You are, after all, the only sponsors to this series. By the way, we're up to number 27. So that's something, right? We'll do some celebration maybe at 50. And that's coming up, right? And uh, so anyway, about the book, as you can see from today's title, it is a bit of a tie-in with the book, but it's not uh, an ad for the book. But anyway, if you haven't seen it and you want to see it, uh, you should check out this little thing here, there's a link at the, in the description below and uh, some of you already got it. And uh, it's, of course, as the title says, about alternate picking is the first of a series of books that I'm writing about the guitar technique. And uh, maybe we'll go even deeper than that into theory and all that stuff. But uh, for now, it's one book at a time. And uh, I've been hard at work on chapter two, which is on a technique that's getting out of hand. You know, I'm already like 50 exercises in. And uh, I don't think I'm halfway through, this, through the book yet. So, you know, you want to keep it tight because uh, it, it helps to have some kind of limit to it. But it really is um, a pretty intense uh, thing. And finally, thanks for all of you who got the records because, as you know, I make records and I've been making them for a long time. And the reason I make them is so that I can share them with people. And so thank you very much. Let me just, just plug this really quickly because uh, this is what I do. I make a lot of music and... Uh, Right now, there's uh, this thing going on where I will send you all four CDs and uh, yeah, for that price written on the screen. And uh, do forgive these plugs, but really, if you are musicians, you will sell them at shows, right? And you will sell them on your website. And my website now is this. I, I'm not really into any kind of other thing. I, do, I use Facebook just to send people over here. And so this is my interaction with you guys. So eventually, you know, sometimes you will see one of these things popping up. And uh, if you're not into it, that's cool. You know, you can just let it pass. And uh, of course, you don't have to buy the CDs. The music is available everywhere on iTunes, Spotify and all that. All right. So thank you very much for listening. And uh, thank you for the comments you sent me on the book. I got your questions and I will try to answer them uh, during these uh, streams. But also I, I reply to pretty much everyone if I can. Uh, so you should be good to go. Sometimes you, you ask me questions on email about the book about you know, your um, application of some exercises and it's just too much to write about. You know, I can't write five pages. So sometimes I will just uh, say, okay, we'll talk about it in a video, all right? So that's also what, I, what, I'm be, what I'll be doing with these videos is try to get on, um, you know, go over the questions and uh, try to answer them. And so feel free to ask them here in the chat room. Hello, Kike, hello, Dennis Art, hello, Jim, Reki. Quite a few of the... Hey, what's that? what happened to Indrajit? We haven't seen him in a while. Indrajit is one of the regulars. And... Uh, all right, cool. Yeah, you'll send comments on the book too, but will after I get through more exercise. All right, yeah. And by the way, do use the comment section and so on. 
it's easier than email sometimes for me. But yes, um, about the book, I understand that a lot of you got it, and I really appreciate it. And also understand that we had a rough year this year, and uh, ten euros seems like not a lot of money. But if you're having a hard time financially, it could be a hard time, and it could be quite a bit of money uh, to use for a guitar book, no matter how how much uh, is it's actually worth, right? Because ten euros for maybe months or years of practice is a pretty good deal. But I do understand that uh, some people just can't afford it right now. So uh, towards the end of this video, I will share a couple of pages of the book um, just to give you, you know, to get you going uh, through the holidays. If you can't get the book or you don't want to get the book, you know, you can still. I will share a couple of pages that have quite a few fundamental exercises, and uh, I will use them with you guys who got the book and uh, give you some more details, and you can ask questions. And then, uh, if you haven't got the book or you can't then you can have those exercises to practice over the holidays, all right? So it should work out pretty good for everyone. So that will be just a bit later, though, when, once we get into the details. And so today's video is about uh, using the guitar pick. And the first thing is holding the pick. Now, holding the pick, it will go very quickly. Hello, Jenny. Good to see you. Uh, it will go very quickly because I already made, I think, one of the most popular videos lately is one from my Guitar Encyclopedia. By the way, if you don't know about the Guitar Encyclopedia, check out the YouTube channel. It's a 100% free uh, course that I did uh, five years ago or something like that. And it's uh, 200 videos on all techniques in separate chapters and, uh, you know, uh, theory. It's, it's really a really good resource. So if you are stuck at home these holidays and you want to study, Besides watching this video, but you know, do check out the, the encyclopedia. I think it will do a lot of good if you're trying to you know, get to grips with the guitar. And so the video from the encyclopedia called Holding the Pick is, or How to Hold the Pick, something like that, is um, you know, it's extremely popular. So if you're, if you're new to the channel, you might have gotten here from that video. But I will go over it really quickly. It's also in the book. All right, let me show it to you really easy, right? Here's how I hold the pick. I make a little hook with my index finger. Right, so it's kind of square, you see it's square, and then I put my pick over this little part here, and then the tip of the finger, and then close it up with my thumb. And this is what I do. And that's it. Now, this gives me a lot of control, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not squeezing my fingers together, I'm barely holding them together. There's no effort, all right? And it's enough that unless I let go, the pick won't fall. But it also gives me a lot of control of how much of an attack I want. So my hands are freezing. So I can go really tight or really soft without actually changing anything about the way I hold it. It's always like this, and all I have to do is open up a bit or, or clamp it down just a little bit. The other thing I can do is control how much of the pick protrudes from my fingers. All right, so here you see I have just a little tiny bit of pick, but then if I just do this, then I can use it more for... Who doesn't want to do this, right? And so with this kind of, uh, of, a, of a grip, then I, I get the, the pick to be quite flexible, and then I can use it for, for all kinds of stuff. Now, if I'm recording, I might go through a few picks, right? Because I, I have my usual picks. But then I also have, which by the way, are, they have alien eyes on them. And uh, who would want my signature on a pick? Well, I have them. Uh, because my ego, you see, my ego is hard to contain. So I'm trying to squeeze it all into this one little piece of plastic. And, uh, but you know, when I record maybe something more chord-like or acoustic, then I might use a thin pick. Uh, for some stuff, I use the really heavy ones. And I was actually debating switching to 1.25. These are about one millimeter. And, uh, the, the com these, these great guys in Tune GP, they're the ones who make my picks, and they sent me the, a bunch of samples, and I really like the extra heavy picks, and I try them, and I try them, and you get this different sound from them, but I haven't got the, the guts to change yet. You know, I've been so used to these for such a long time. I started with these when I was a kid, and I never moved up or down from the heavy ones. You know, I did change brands until I found these guys, and uh, I've been with them for, I don't know, must, it must be at least 12 years or more. They're called Intune GP. They're great guys. And uh, yeah. So anyway, the, the, this is how I hold the pick. Now, the other thing that happens when you hold the pick like this is that you kind of save yourself from a lot of trouble of how do I use the picking hand on the guitar? Because 
it, let's say I hold the pick like this, right? A lot of beginners do this and then sometimes they get stuck. Now, before we continue, I do not ask for people to change the way they hold the pick. I don't want you to change it if you're happy with it. The only thing I've seen is that some people have their own way of holding the pick and it works great for them. But some people have their own way of holding the pick and they get to this point and they can't improve. It doesn't matter how long they practice, how well they practice, how mindfully they practice, they can't improve on it. So I'm showing you how I do it and you can then decide if, you're, if you're, you have your own technique and you're happy with it, keep doing it, right? But, but if, if you need some help, then this might help. So the way, if you're holding the pick like this, for example, the only true way of using the pick is like this circular motion, right? So here's the string and this is you going like this. Now this, this creates a lot of waste because if this is a string and you go like this, all this movement is wasted and it's really hard to just move it like this. But the way I do it, I hold it like this and when I move the pick from over the string, you see um, how I'm almost touching the string, even if I've already played. I never, go, I never go too far from the string. That means that I'm always in control of where the string is. The other thing that I do is, by holding the pick like this, the only movement I need to make is this tiny little... Look, I, I, I put the title there to be cool and now it's right on top of my, wait, my wrist. All right, here we go. Okay, this is terrible. Let me just get rid of the, of the little thing here. Uh, is this one? Yeah. All right, so you see, all I have to do is move this, the wrist just like that, flat on the guitar. I can relax my fingers. I'm just letting them drop dead on the guitar. There's no holding on to the guitar for dear life. There's no, you know, I'm not um, resting the weight of my hand on the fingers. The, the hand is just dead on the guitar and I'm just moving my wrist, okay? So that takes care of everything that's on one string for me is just this. You know, a tiny, tiny, tiny movement of the wrist. That's it, nothing else. Now, if I want to change strings, then that's when my, my arm um, gets into play and we'll get to it right away actually which is about picking mechanics, okay, on one string and across those strings. This is my title. And again, it's right over my, my hand. And if I move too much, then I would be out of frame. So I will just stay here and do this, all right? So if I'm on, on one string, you see it's only, it's only the wrist, okay? Now, if I want to move from one string to the next, again, I will get rid of these very nice titles. I have to take and bring the pick to the string that I want. So let's say that I'm playing on each string. You see what I'm doing is I'm lowering the whole section with a very tiny movement of the, of the elbow and just a little bit of drop of the arm. See? You see it's in a straight line. I go down. I don't do this. This will change the angle in between strings. So I keep the same angle. I just go down and up. If I'm playing more than one note, I'm still going, right? I'm still going on the same line. And while I'm, I'm on one string, the only movement is the wrist. But as I move down to the next string, or up, the arm is like an elevator. You see, it's, it's taking me to the right floor. But this, this, the wrist is, just keeps going. I'm, I'm not stopping and I'm trusting my hand, my, my arm to take my hand to the right string. Okay, so that's the mechanics that I use. Again, there are many ways to do it. And some great guitar players have done uh, great things with their own way of doing it. But, you know, I've, I've gone through hundreds of students and I've, I've seen a lot of people struggle. When they do struggle, this helps them a lot. So if you are struggling, then uh, you might want to consider it. If you're not struggling, you might be struggling later on. Maybe you, you technically you are at you know 50%, and when you get to 70 or 80%, you'll find that ceiling that you can't break. So that might help you then, you know. But the more you play with your own technique, the more you will trust your technique, and the harder it will be to change. So maybe you should just give it a shot and see what happens. It is explained in detail in the book, but um, 
sometimes with a few pictures in a book it's hard to convey and so I thought I would show you how I do it. I will link that video of how to hold the pick anyway from the encyclopedia because it's, um, it seems to have helped a lot of people. Okay, that is art says that I use 1.14 millimeter now, but I used to use almost the thinnest pick because couldn't control the thick ones. After practice, though, I won't go back to thin. Yes, actually, we're going to talk about it right now when it comes to pick angles. And this is the thing that troubles a lot of people when they play with a pick. Um, uh, there's many ways you can screw up this. Uh, by the way, I, I can't curse. I, I'm not really big on cursing, but I think last time I used uh, one word or something. And, and now YouTube says that I can't uh, monetize that video. It's limited because I said it, it was just an innocent little thing. I didn't say anything bad, but you know, I try to keep it uh, rated PG or something. And uh, also, please let me know if I've been controlling and, and managing the amount of ads that go on to the live streams after the live because they were on automatic and I think there were a bunch of ads that I, I, I think I've set it up now so there's only a few and if not I go in and I can and I delete them. Let me know if it's overbearing if there's like a hundred ads on any videos. Don't hesitate to let me know in the comments or just send me an email because I don't want you to have to suffer through it if you want to watch it again. All right so uh, the angles there's really three ways you can screw up right there's um, well there's more but the first one and the first question is do I angle the pick downwards like this. Now this is something that I would do when I play because you get different sounds. You get different sounds by, by how you move the pick and as a matter of fact when I actually perform I almost never play with the same pick uh, position. I always tilt it, angle it, mm, dig in, float over the string, I play here, play there. If you see me play, uh, you, you have seen me play, right? When I used to play one song for you every time we went live, I'm all over the place with the pick. And, but that's different from practicing. You know, you can't really practice. Uh, you can't practice in a way that is not uh, specific because otherwise you'll never be able to measure it. So for practice at least and, and for good technique, the idea is to keep your, your, your pick in line with the string. So parallel to the string, don't turn it this way. First of all, because this is where the biggest tone is, the, the best sound. Say the same strength. When you, when, you hit the pick, when you hit the string with the pick perpendicular to or, or parallel to it, and you hit the string, you get this big attack, and then the note kind of blooms into the, into the note. Slowly goes like bloom, and you get this like a mushroom thing, right? Of sound, listen to it. It's right there. You get the attack and then the note blooms. If you, if you cut through it, it's all there in the beginning, but it's really thin. So it's, it's an effect for sure, but it's not the best way to play. So first of all, don't, don't tilt the pick. Now, if you do that, so play parallel to the string, you might feel that the, th the, the pick gets stuck into the string. It gets hard to move, it gets hard to, to alternate. Okay, the reason is that the other dimension that you have to take care of is the depth. So you don't want to go deep within the string. Okay, D don't go deep on the string. You might actually think that you're just floating over the string. This is what, the way I think when I play. I float over the string with the tip of the pick. So if I'm here, I'm not doing this. I'm playing over the string. I'm still at an ang I'm still at a at a parallel to the string. I'm not angling the pick. I'm not doing this. I'm still parallel. But here that I'm digging into the string, I'm getting stuck. But if I lift the pick just a little bit, now I'm floating over the pick over the over the string. And that way I don't get stuck. Now, there's a limit, right? Because if you if you go too uh, shallow, let's say, if this is deep, right, you go to shallow, then you might get uh, a weak sound, uh, you know, a bit of a, of a um, what do you call that? I don't know, but you know, just a, an unpleasant, not strong sound. So there's a, there's a happy medium there where you hit the string with a certain degree of, uh, of, of attack, but don't let the, the pick just fall under the string because then you'll get stuck and then you'll get too much of that first attack and not enough bloom so there's a sweet spot okay 
right? That's the kind of the sweet spot for the pick. And then, of course, you don't you don't always want the most pleasant sound, or the most round sound, or the most uh, um, uh, musical sound. Sometimes you want something with an edge. Sometimes you want something with more character or less character. And that's how and why you you play with the pick position all the time. You don't just do the same all the time. But when you practice, you want control over all these axes, right? Don't tilt it and play like this over the string. The, finally, there's this, right? The drop of the pick, or you know, there, there's so many names for it. But over the over the Y axis, you don't want to do this, right? You don't want to. You don't want the pick to hit the string diagonally. And the reason is the same. I lose the attack. It's a nice sound, right? But it's not what we're practicing because when I go down and up, then I get stuck under the string. So I would have to do this. Tilt it this way, and then this way, and then this way, and then this way. Now this might sound familiar if you're doing this. Right? Because maybe you don't want this kind of sound. Right? Maybe you want it more of a smooth overall sound, and that's why you let the pick drop a little bit, and you get this. But uh, that's something you need to take care of, especially when you get used to playing downstrokes more than upstrokes. And that's why alternate picking is so important, because you don't want this instead of this. Right? If you do all downstrokes, there will be a reason for it, and then you'll be able to practice that, but with good technique, all right? So, don't angle it like this. Keep it parallel to the string. Don't dig, dig too deep into the string, but really almost float over it. And uh, don't let the pick drop like this, because that, that might help on the downstroke, but it will really screw up your upstrokes. You will get stuck under the string. And the only solution to that would be to const constantly do this every time you down pick or up pick. Not worth it. And uh, these are the main things. Now, all this is for practice again, and it's not, uh, they're not rules and they're not um, absolutes, right? You, you, you will have to eventually adapt to whatever you're playing. But for practice, picking and alternate picking and even sweep picking and, you know, everything that has to do with picking, I suggest you try this. All right? So let's take a little break for questions because then we're moving on to different things. So maybe you want to write down your questions. You've been quiet today. I never know if that's a good sign or a bad sign. Because, you know, when, when you're in school and everybody's quiet during somebody's lecture, it means they're either they're really interested or they're asleep, right? So let me know if you have any questions and then we'll move on to a little something. Good sign, all right. <laughs> so you are not asleep, which is good. Can you describe picking for pinch harmonics? Yes, actually, yes, I can, I can, I can. Whoops, let me see. Um, yeah, it's, it's the same thing. What I don't like is uh, I've got some students who had with the same question, but it's like, well, how can I go from one technique, normal playing, to the other technique, which is pinch harmonics? And it, there's no two techniques because you don't want, you don't know when you're going to hit a pinch harmonic, right? I mean, you know when you're going to do it, but you know when, you don't know when you want to do it. Um, if I'm playing something and I can't hear myself, I hope the pinch harmonics will come up. So what I wanted to play was a few notes with normal sound then a bit of a half harmonic in the middle, and then hit it with the real harmonic at the end. Okay, so I don't want to have to, I don't want to have to stop and say, okay, now this technique, now that technique, and that technique. And that's another reason, by the way, Jim, it's a good question because it's another reason why this would not work, or I wouldn't be able to make it work because it's a different kind of grip on the, on the pick to do pinch harmonics than to play like this. Whereas when I'm doing this, all I have to do is drop my thumb just a little more. Normal, harmonic.
okay? And the way I'm doing it is I hit the string. I don't know what you are hearing though, that's a problem. Let me just try it. Okay, I play the note and I just let the wrist drop just a little bit more. You see that? Instead of moving like this, I'm letting it go down just a little more. Then the, 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 this part of my thumb will touch the string and that's it. The important thing about this is that you don't suffocate the string like that. Let it ring. You might even take this hand out and it still sounds like a harmonic. I made a video a while ago when I was doing the Inside the Song series. If you, if you look for it, I tried to post it. Uh, the one on Power were Fantastic, it shows you from close up how to do pinch harmonics. But the, the simple idea is that you play a note just like every other note and then you... And you know how, by the way, distortion helps. I have a, quite a bit of a clean sound. But the other thing you might notice is that I'm using the, the bridge pickup. That's important because most of the harmonics are in this area. And the other thing is you notice how when I move this hand, I'm producing different notes. And so check out that video I, sh I told you about, the one on pinch harmonics. I'll post a link, but it's really one of the latest ones if you look at, um, just look for it, you know, on the channel, it's, you should find it pretty quick. And yeah, I hope this helps. All right, so one more thing about the pick. If you, oh wait, the result says you're quiet because you're practicing and listening. All right, cool. <laughs> um, one more thing that does come up in the book, convergent and uh, divergent picking. Now this is a, I made it up, so I don't know if it's a real word. Or, it is a real word, I just don't know if it's a real uh, technique or not. But the basic idea, we talked about it, I think, a little while ago. Uh, if I'm playing two strings, like this, you notice how, in this example, I'm going down, up, down, and the next string coincides with an upstroke. Okay, so when I'm playing this, the pick is taking me to the next note. See, the pick is going down and the next note is on the string, next string down from that. So it, it all, it's all working in my favor. And then when I go back, this upstroke on the third string is taking me towards the fourth string where the next note is. So convergent picking means that every picking, every, every time I use a pick, I'm going towards the next note. So in a kind of a, it's helping me out with the next note. If I do this the other way around, which is this, right? So I'm just going backwards. Now it's different. I'm still starting with the downstroke. But you see how this down, up, down, this downstroke, it, what, it, what it wants to do is go down towards the second string. But I have to play a note on the fourth string. So I have to jump over the third string and then play the fourth. And then if I keep going, the last note that I play on the fourth string is an upstroke, which kind of takes me towards the fifth string. But really the next note I have to play is on the third string. So again, I'm moving away from where I want to go. Um, right, so the idea here is that it's something you have to practice. And if you, and it, the reason I, I'm going over it again, because we talked about it about a week ago or two, the reason I'm going over it is because uh, the thing I showed you about how to use the pick, the angle and stuff, people fall back to the, their bad habits of tilting the pick and, you know, having a kind of a, flo um, a sloppy technique here because they're trying to accommodate for all these things that happen. And this is just an exercise. <laughs> But in real life, you get all kinds of convergent and divergent picks at all times. So you, do, you don't want to be actually thinking about it. And so I suggest you practice it because you never know what happens when you're playing. And what I've seen with people who don't control this is that when they're improvising or, or playing something, every note they play is worrisome. They have to go like, okay, where is this pick going? Oh, wow, now maybe should I, should I play two picks down in a row? Because, you know, it's... 
then the next one is, you know, and it drives you crazy. So I prefer to just have a good, a good alternate picking technique and I can play anything in any direction. And the, the way you measure it is if you can get your convergent and your divergent picking at the same level. So you don't prefer one over the other. And it is, it, while you do it, what you're doing actually is fine tuning those things we talked about. Okay, because if I tilt this, the pick like this, or I dig too deep, or I let the pick fall, it will impede the next thing. It will make you, like if you tilt this, the pick like this, then your upstroke will be severely damaged, right? If you do this, your attack will sound like crap and changing strings will, will be very noisy. If I dig too deep, I might get a bit of a better attack sometimes if you don't go too overboard with it, but then it will be hard for me to jump over other strings because I have to dig my, you know, come out of this hole I dug myself into and then jump over one string and then back again and then up. And then you'll get uh, tension in your, in your hand, in your forearm. Whereas if you do what I'm saying, you will never feel any tension ever anywhere. That's why, you know, sometimes if I'm recording, I might play 12 hours a day or 11 hours a day. It's no problem at all. Okay. So, uh, it's important and uh, there's a few things in the book that I talk about, about divergent and convergent picking. And so again, as I was saying, I know that um, a little something, it's just a little gift for everyone if you're practicing, uh, because I know that this virus thing has hit people pretty hard and uh, we might think 10 euros for a book is nothing, right? But I understand that people just cannot sometimes afford this. So. I can't give the book away, right? Because otherwise it would be pretty untenable. But I'm giving you this if you, and even if you have the book, you might want to focus on this. And just, and you can pause the video. I hope the resolution is enough. I, I really did the highest resolution possible for this. So hopefully you'll be able to put it in um, full screen and uh, take a picture of it or copy it down, and then you'll have the exercises. And these are some of the combinations that we use with the different fingers. And uh, th these are the first six exercises. There's a few things that will kind of make you drive your picking hand a bit crazy because of uh, repeated notes. And then uh, there's one exercise that's a pedal note, which again makes things pretty hard for the picking hand. And then I think a couple of examples or one example with, with a scale. All right, so just a little excerpt. Of course, the book has about 70 exercises, but I thought this might get you through the holidays if you cannot afford the book. And um, and so the first section, of course, you can go back and take pictures of it. But the first section is about um, is about um, divergent and convergent. So you go down, I mean, up the notes, down the strings and backwards. And it uses it uses all the basic combinations of three fingers that really show up in pretty much every scale possible. Okay, so this, this should be studied in depth, all right? <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm gonna have a little sip of my tea. I promise it's not vodka or anything. <laughs> it's just tea. And um, so, what was I saying? See, maybe it is vodka. Yeah, so that's the first thing. Then the other thing is uh, just a little exercise that repeats. And will kind of drive your, your both of your hands a bit crazy, all right? And then um, uh, this one is uh, one with uh, um, a pedal note, so. Like that, so you always repeat one note. And you can expand it to all kinds of stuff. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff with pedal notes. And then there's a couple of things with a scale. All right, so I think it will help you out. And uh, you can just see it as a, a few exercises that you can practice. And uh, if you like them, then of course, do get my book. That is art says, uh, does the heel of your hand dampen the strings above the one you're picking? Okay, that's a good question. That is a very good question. I'll answer it right away. The resolution is excellent. All right, great. So hopefully you, you can all see the, the tablature. If, if you can't, um, I don't know, leave a comment and I'll try to upload it somewhere, but it should be all right. Okay, so let's move on to the Q&A, just in time for um, the Lizard's question. 
Yes, as a matter of fact, muting strings becomes some something of a. It's always there, you know, your technique for muting strings and and your conscious all the time of how much noise there is and what's producing the noise. And um, you kind of get used to it. You should really develop an instinct and a second. It, it should be second nature. And uh, instead of practicing, I always tell people to just play everything you can as clean as you can. And eventually you'll develop this, this method. For me, answering your question, usually I take care of everything above the note I'm playing with this part of my hand. So I'm, I'm always resting. You see, I'm always resting on the guitar. I'm never tense. I'm never holding my arm up with, from my shoulder. I'm not using my, my elbow. My elbow is always dead. You know, my arm is dead on the guitar. And so even my hand is dead and I just let it rest there. So the only important thing I have to keep in mind is that if everything is dead, I get this sound. Right, so I can have everything dead, but, but the string has to pass below this area. All right, so like, oh, you can't see that. It's impossible to show this. But you see, you can see how my hand is, right? And if I play, it's passing freely, but look at this. Ready? I'm playing the third string, right, with my pick. If I play the fourth, it's already muted, but not the third. Okay? Now, if I, if I were to move up to the fourth, then the fourth will sound, but the fifth will be muted. Okay? And you barely see this movement, but it's there. That's what I was talking about at the beginning of the video. When I move from one string to the next, I'm using my arm to take me there, never the wrist. If I, change, if I move the wrist, then I will be muting strings that I don't want to mute and so on. So that's one thing. And then uh, below the string that I'm playing, if, it, if, it's, if it's necessary, sometimes it isn't, I use um, my fingers from this hand. Okay. Usually only the immediate string below, because I play so lightly, or I try to always play very lightly. I never generate so much vibration that you know, I start getting the whole guitar um, vibrating, you know, the whole string uh, sympathetically resonating. So that's not really a problem. All right. So hopefully that answers your questions. Please send more questions. We have a bit of time today. Well, if there's no questions, that's fine too, you know. But um, yes, thanks, Andre. All right, great. So anyway, um, if there's only one question, that's fine. But I have time today. We've, we've been going for like 40 minutes, so we're well below our average of one hour. Did I go too fast? Let me just uh, let me do this. Let me bring this back up just for a couple of seconds, just in case something. Because sometimes there's spots on the live streams where resolution might drop for a little while. So let me just leave this on for 10 seconds or so, and then you can just pause it. All right. All right, I think that's enough. You can just uh, take a screenshot of that. Okay, so I'm waiting for your questions. And if there's none, really, I, there's not much more I can say. Um, if you want to know if I if I'm and I'm, I'm asking myself questions, but my, might be uh, interesting is how much do I actually use this when I play? I never think of alternate picking, not alternate picking. You know, if you've heard some of my stuff, sometimes you might hear something that's you go like, wow, you know, that's so clear. like for example, on the last record, Mystic Electric, my goal was to have everything as articulate as possible. So the actual articulation of the sound, the 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 you know the beginning of a sound the development of the sound and the dead of the the death of the sound until the next one comes in and it was something that was extremely important and i wrote it in the first page of my production book i always have a little notebook like this for every project 
this is secret. This is the, the next record. And the, here I had articulation because I thought that I had a bit of a loose touch on some of my other records, which I really like, but I said, no, this, this, um, this record I wanted to be very, because it was so much based also on some electronic stuff, machine stuff. And so I said, no, I really want this to be very tight and precise without changing my style. But you know, it was just something, some direction like that. And uh, sometimes you want to do it. And sometimes you want to just uh, play a bit looser. And so when I play, I never really think of this. But before you cannot think of this, you have to have worked on it enough that it becomes um, ingrained into your, your own body, really. So when I hear a note, it comes, that information that I'm hearing in my head, it comes with how am I attacking the note, where am I attacking it, what pick I'm using, am I using basically even what finger I'm using, and certainly on what string I'm playing this note. You, you got many notes on the guitar, you can play them in four or five different positions, or four at least. And that's something I really think about. But I think of the sound, you see, and if I if I've worked on my picking technique enough, then I'm free to do that. Just think of the sound, and the idea of the sound will inform my hand of how I want to play. And uh, that's extremely important when you improvise. So maybe that's a bit of advice. If you're improvising, don't improvise thinking of, oh, am I playing right, wrong? Am I playing the right notes? Am I playing, does it sound good? Am I good? Am I bad? Just focus on the sound. What do you want to hear? And they can, go, they can go down to what note you're playing, if you have good ear training, or just what sound you want. You know, you can do it on only one note. You see, you listen to all these timbres that I can get. I used to do this, I used to play for uh, 30, 30 minutes or one hour only one note. And especially the notes that I didn't really know where they were, I said, okay, after this hour, I will know where you are. And I used to do it, and it, sound, it sounds crazy, but it went by pretty fast because there's so many ways you can play a note. All right, so that's my answer to the question that nobody asked. And uh, so many bad habits I've picked up over the years, but being I'm not a serious guitar player is not such a big deal. But for those who want to be serious, I can see it's so important to learn early. Well, I didn't learn early at all. You know, I, I've, I've been self-taught my whole life. And uh, I was uh, thrown into the pool, at the deep end of the pool, actually, pretty soon. I, I started playing at f uh, 14 or 15. And by the time I was not even 16, I was already playing in bands. And at 16, I joined one of the bigger bands of the local circuits in Milan, you know, the youth thing. They were older, they were 19 or 20, I was, I was um, uh, 16 at the time. But we were playing pretty big stages, uh, a lot of people, uh, we had original material, we, were, uh, we appeared on compilations that went, uh, for example, the first one was uh, ho over the whole uh, of Europe. It was um, distributed, so they said, okay, go to the studio, record a song, and we'll put it on, uh, on this record. So here's some money, go and get get it done and we went and we had to play everything live to tape so you know um, it's really important even if it's not you know it's it's so important to to uh, even in your own way you see you don't need me you don't need anybody teaching you the thing what I'm doing with my students I know I understand this is once a week and it's pretty random right I decide what I talk about and it's not necessarily what you need in this moment but with my students, I always tell them they don't really 100% need me. What they need me for is to save a lot of time, right? So let me make all the mistakes that I made through thousands and thousands and thousands of hours. And, and then I can tell them this works, this doesn't. And, you know, check this out and maybe don't spend three hours a day doing things that have no effect, right? And so it's great that you do it by yourself, but you have to kind of focus in a way because there's no, you see, there's no medal at the end for effort. There's no... There's no prize for putting in a lot of work. It's only when you work smartly that you get the prize. And uh, I had to learn this because I used to play a lot, thinking, well, I look, I played a lot. And uh, it didn't work. And, you know, I was a swimmer. For, lo, short story, I went, and up until I was 16 or so, I used to swim every day for three, four hours. In the summer, it was two trainings a day. I w it was very serious. And... Uh, 
and you know it never mattered i realized early on you have to you have to train and i went every day but sometimes you you were dead at the end of training and it didn't mean anything you know you had to practice smart you have to train smart am i improving this am i improving that and I, it, it really translated very well to guitar and everything else you know it's not enough to put in a thousand hours you have to put in a thousand smart hours then it will work and so you have to always adjust your aim you see it's it's never you always be conscious when you're practicing is this doing me any good you know and a teacher a good teacher will tell you look maybe tomorrow you will think that this is not this is not good for you but trust me because i've done it and i've seen it on with a hundred other people and it is good for you so let, just trust me with this go home and if you don't get it still do it you know do what i say that's what you're paying for do what i say and then you'll be able to take it further and and make your do your own thing with it so yeah so this is this is where i think these videos might be helpful because i'm taking them very seriously and i will never teach you something that's not uh that i'm not 100 percent sure of there's many things i don't know about the guitar i have no problem saying that i don't know it but the things i do know i do know them pretty well and even though there might be a you know we're not always at the same level so maybe i'm teaching something today that's way beyond or way below where you're at and maybe you're saying well I, I wasn't looking for this this week but cumulatively you know if you go over all the stuff we did there's always something that you can get out of them and uh, so that's my role really you don't have to even like what i play by learning literally i just meant what you start when to learn guitar apart from age yes yes it, the, the sooner you get to the good stuff the better you know all right so any more questions jim everybody jenny uh kike what's up carlos there's a bunch of you in here but um also if you're not participating in the chat room that's fine but please don't feel um intimidated by this you know just say hello maybe tell me where you're from because i get a kick out of it if you want to do me a favor that's what you can do just get on the chat room and tell me where you're from if there is time to do whatever i like to hear a sample of your tom schultz pedal effects those oh you can't see them they're off camera just short sample of topic i know so maybe some other time yes the reason some other time because they're not they're plugged in but on a different system so you know we have to go over there and plug everything in and you know it's not uh, right now it's not possible but i will okay sure I, i'll have them I, the stereo delay is to die for and the chorus but delay is like crazy this is crazy maybe one day we can do a little bit of something about gear i never really talk about gear because to me it's secondary but i understand there's a bit of a some of the synths some of you have asked me to get, go over the synths Ricky, how about the economic picking and uh, you're from south of france wow beautiful all right i'm from oh yes i do i do you know you're from canada but intimidated okay yeah you should be there's a bunch of strange people in this chat room uh no i'm just kidding how about the economic picking you mean sweet picking that's certainly something you should know but i would suggest always do alternate picking first because when economy picking i think you're meaning this so if i'm playing a scale or even this little exercise instead of instead of alternating i go down right when i change strings downwards i, I go down with the pick and then when i play a string above I go up, down, up, up, down, up, which is reminiscent. It's reminiscent of um, um, of sweep picking when you actually play only one note. You play only one note per string, so it becomes much more natural than alternating. Although in the book, as you know, there's a, a whole section on. Uh, on playing arpeggios with alternate picking because it has such a beautiful different sound and it really works it's a really good workout for your for your um, picking hand but anyway going back to sweep picking it's it's a good thing to have and i use it and i have used it not really for arpeggios i'm not really into that i used to be when i was a kid when i was starting out you know all the crazy stuff but uh to me it's a sound right so if if the sound of alternate picking is not um it's not doing it for me then i switch and i have no problem switching i have no allegiance to any technique so if i'm playing something and and i'm getting you know i'm getting oh, that's a bit too defined or it's a bit too then i might do see i'm going down twice but this is a different sound from this 
Mm -hmm. See, to me, it's completely different. And so I, I naturally uh, do that. And, uh, but I will certainly do more sweeping if you want, although I'm not an expert. I, I do know the technique quite well, but it's not something I use too much on my records. I almost stopped and bought a new guitar in Denver yesterday. I want a Fender. I think I'm going to drive back down and get an electric. I think an electric would be much funnier than my acoustic. Yes. Well, I don't know what to say. I do like, to me, the electric guitar is it, you know. I like to play a bunch of instruments, but when you grab an electric guitar and you plug it in, you know, it's, it's primal, you know. To me, it's, it's, uh, it's, th that's it. But yeah, Jenny, get it. Get the guitar and then uh, you can tell us everything about it. Il, il, hello. I was just watching Why Do We Boil Lobsters Alive and saw this on my recommendation. Random, but I'm here. Well, it's good to have you here. I don't know why you would watch uh, a video on boiling lobsters alive, <laughs> but it's good to have you. And do you play guitar? Speed picking with acoustic, see many vids on YouTube of that. Oh yeah, there's all kinds of stuff on YouTube. I stay off YouTube unless I'm making videos because otherwise I never do anything. You know, there's, there's thousands of people doing everything better than me, right? At everything. So I'm like, okay, just do your thing. And uh, that's like one of the bad things about YouTube is like, first of all, you think you watch a video on something and uh, that, that's, that counts as practice, of course, and it doesn't. And the other thing is like, because everybody knows something, you put it all together in the collective of YouTube and you think that everybody knows everything. So let me assure you that none of us know everything, you know. A lot of us know just a few things, you know, that, and then they make them work. They go really deep with something and they make it work for them. So from the outside, it looks like they're like, wow, this guy's on another planet. But really, it's just, uh, you know, knowing a few things a bit better. YouTube can preoccupy a lot of time. Yeah. Oh, yes, it does. Il, you do, you do play. All right. Well, hopefully you join us again. You, you caught us at kind of at the end of this video, but um, feel free to watch it again, of course. All right. So, Reki, could you do a lesson about exercise based on triads? Of course. I love triads. I love triads. I've, 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 I torture a lot of my students. There's a few of you online, you know, some of my online students from around the world. And when the time comes to study triads, they all consider switching to another teacher, I think. But triads are extremely important. They're extremely important. And uh, that is art. So I choose smart and just watch quality. All right. Good comment. Il, you were here before it even started. All right. Cool. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, so maybe oh, next week, next week is going to be the 26th. And uh, I think I could, uh, I could be here probably, but I'm not sure because it's a holiday. So hopefully by the 24th, 25th, besides maybe you don't want me here babbling on your holidays on your Christmas holidays. If you guys are going to be here, I will try to do something. And then uh, the next time will be the 20, the, the second or the first. And I think I'll be here too. Let me just uh, make sure. And if I'm not here, then I will try to post something, you know, as a premiere. So it kind of looks like a live stream, but it's not. But I would record it live as I did a few times when I was traveling. And, uh, but if I can, I will just keep these going, you know, throughout the holidays. But just in case I can't, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. So for that, maybe Facebook it is a good place. But otherwise, I'll just, if you don't see it posted on Saturday, you know, then I'll know this, you know, there's probably nothing coming. If there's a premiere, then I will uh, certainly um, announce it soon enough that you can watch it. And, I, and I'll try to be in the chat room with you so I can answer some questions. All right. So, so yes, Reki, if you don't see one on triads coming soon, let, please do remind me. What is the name of your 200 lesson on YouTube? It's called the Guitar Encyclopedia. Let me just write it down for you. But you can just look in the channel. There's a whole uh, playlist on it. And uh, there are quite a, there's 200 videos. And then I also <clears throat> uh, publish them as 11 separate chapters. OK, so that would, um, that would be good. Yes. And thanks again for everything. I really <clears throat> appreciate your support and uh, your support of the books and the records. That's, that means a lot. And uh, I hope you have a great Christmas because I won't see you until after that. I hope you get a lot of good stuff, a lot of gear, 
uh, instruments, but mostly you get a lot of music out of your mind, you know, and set it on, on paper or on your computers or, or, you know, just do something musical and uh, put it out there, you know, maybe just a little WhatsApp with your friends or a message or an email, but it's really important to produce music and make music, not just um, study it, because what, what are you studying music for if you're not making music, right? That's another big, big thing for me. I've seen a lot of people spend 20, 20 years studying music, and then you ask, I ask them, why are you studying music? And they're like, I don't know. I thought I would do something with it. <laughs> So, yeah, you know, if you can, make music and publish it, put it out there. Even YouTube, you know, is a great place to just, uh, you don't need a deal, a record deal. You don't need even a distributor, a distribution channel. Just post it, share the link. And uh, Jim already did. And a few of you and Alex did. And there's quite a few of you with Kike. Kike has a great channel with covers. But anyway, I look forward to seeing your creations. Yes, Merry Christmas to all of you as well. Thanks for being here. Another great lesson session under thanks. Much enjoy playing Hoyt's bio. All right. Have a great one, everyone. Thanks. That is art. And wherever you are in the world, be cool. Stay frosty, as they say. And uh, be kind to everybody. And uh, have a great time. See you soon. Bye-bye.